Hi everyone! In the previous uh, tutorial we have seen how to use different elevation data sets and play with uh, mesh creation settings like uh, curvature toll in order to vary the resulting mesh resolution and uh, we had in mind that uh, everything is always a trade-off uh, between on one side uh, accuracy or eye candy and on the other side uh, complexity or sustainability for X-Plane. Um, in the course of that tutorial, I also briefly mentioned that uh, different triangles constituting the mesh uh, had uh, different types, and these triangles are represented here on the render on the right by uh, different colors. So there are types for water, runway, taxiway, etc. The goal of today's video tutorial is to explain what different types are deduced from and how to edit the source or the sources in order to achieve certain goals. And the two goals we will meet today is adding a missing airport and adding a missing piece of water. Okay, so what are these triangle types deduced from? And I've certainly said that our base source for this is OSM for OpenStreetMap. And although there is map in the name, OpenStreetMap is actually a database at the start and a database of uh, geolocated nodes, so points with latitude, longitude, and a certain number of tags attributed to them every uh, everyday life tags, like uh, this is a runway, this is a taxiway, this is a river, etc. So this information is downloaded on, from the online database uh, during step one of Auth for XP, and then it is cached on disk. And I'm gonna show you where it is cached. So if I go here to my Auth for XP tutorial, uh, folder, there is this uh, this uh, folder named uh, OSM data, and that's where this information is cached. Here we just had one file, so I just go to that directory, and there are four, four of them: one related to airports, roads, coastline, and water. You can't read these files directly with the text editor because uh, I compressed them by default for uh, space efficiency, for disk space efficiency, but we can open them directly with this uh, Java OSM editor, which I encourage you uh, to download. So let me do it. File, open jump to that directory and let's play with the airport one. Okay, so this is it. You can't see many things there because there's no background imagery, but let me add the OSM map and now you can see it better. And for example, if I go to the Columbia airport, which we were looking at, uh, this is the information. So you see these are the nodes, one node, another node. So this node has no attribute, but if I take this sequence of node called a way in OSM, this is an attribute which is aerial way, taxiway. Okay, that one would be aerial way, runway. Okay, so this is the database, the online database from which the map, the OSM map is then built from. And this is also the database from which the author for XP scenery is built from. Uh, in addition to other sources of information like elevation that sets and, and so on. But this is one of the main sources to build the scenery. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you uh, today is there is an airport on that same tile uh, called Gilbert Airport. Let me find it again. Here it is. So it's part of that same Columbia tile. It's known to OSM. You see there is its name here. But the only information that's in OSM is a node. There's a node, so one point, uh, which says this is an aeroway aerodrome, so an airport. It has a name, but there's no information about runway or anything like that. So in particular, Auto for XP cannot do anything with it because you don't know how to place the runway, and so you cannot smooth it or try to make it uh, as in real life. So uh, in such cases, there are very few in Europe, for example, but in the United States, there are quite a lot of very small airports like this. Actually, if I put the background imagery to USGS, you see it's probably a very small private airport in between houses. Uh, how would we <coughs> modify that local cache data in order for that airport to be considered by Arthur for XP? Well, th there is, it's really not complicated. I, so you'll be using mostly these 
uh, two tools here, that one for selecting, that one for editing. So here I want to edit and I'll just draw her one way like this. And I'm gonna add the tag away. Not taxiway, but runway in that case. I do validate. Maybe I can take that node here and take it a little bit closer. It's not very important. And to show you that it's a local database and we don't uh, need to stay close to reality, I'm going to change the name of the airport. And instead of Gilbert Airport, let me call it Wonderful Gilbert Airport. OK. Now let's go back to Orthofrexp. Mm, I haven't saved that already, so if I uh, assemble the vector data for that tile, let me stop it now, you see there is nowhere that airport, that Gilbert airport was mentioned, and I told you why it was so. Now if I save it, save, go back to Frexby and I do it again, and I stop it immediately, now we have it mentioned. Okay. And it's going to be used, so AuthFrexP is going to put triangles here, all around, well aligned, and trying to make some nice uh, polynomial interpolation from the uh, elevation datasets in order to reproduce something which, uh, <coughs> which would be uh, nice to fly. Whereas if you try that airport prior to this modification, you will see that the elevation data is not uh, wonderful there, and the, the runway will be a little bit bumpy. Okay, so uh, that's all we have to do. This is uh, for, say, adding a missing airport. You, you, there are many things you can do with by editing OSM data. Uh, let's say, I don't know, if I just wanted to make, for example, that one way a little bit longer, I would do something like that. I don't know, suppose silly things, but let's assume there is a new taxiway here and I want to, to add a taxiway and join it here. I would do that and then add a tag I away taxiway. Okay, validate. I won't say it because that's stupid, but okay. Okay, we're finished with adding a new airport. Let's remove that tile. Maybe I can remove that, that too. And now we'll be dealing with uh, water. And since one of the users on the explain.org forum asked me about uh, one tile in, uh, where was that, in British Columbia, if I remember correctly, that was, uh, I know that it's somewhere, I find it again, sorry, uh, minus 127. Okay, let's try to build that tile. So, now I don't have the data cached already, so it's done loading it. Um, there's no airport at all on that tile. No road either, so it's probably down in the forests in British Columbia. There's a few water, a few coastline, and I'm gonna process it completely so that we can see uh, this one. I can remove now, and because I'm gonna build the mesh for it. Uh, with everything defaulted, it's not the, the point here. So let's build the mesh now. And uh, I will, I'm gonna wait for it to be built and then I will show it. Sorry for the delay, okay, we have it now. Render, shading, I put the types, okay. And actually uh, I already quickly looked at that. And this is the part where the user wanted, so these are two small lakes. And there is uh, another one somewhere here, which you see is not in the data, it's not in OSM. And we're going to check that actually now that we have downloaded the OSM data locally, I'm going to open it. Maybe this is something I could show um, in the OSM data. There was just one folder uh, a few minutes ago. Now we have this additional folder for that tile. 
So let me open the water one for that one, this guy, this, this time, this time, sorry, uh, water. There it is. So the, these two lakes are those two ones here. And of course, well, I can't, I can't draw the third one from the OSM map because by the definition, the data is not in OSM, but there is additional background imagery is available, so I could use either an orthophoto one, or here I also have different uh, vector. So this is uh, jail base. This is the Canadian uh, hydrographic uh, database. I'm gonna use that one. And I think this is the lake that the user wanted to add. Uh, maybe I can also add the Bing imagery, for example, and make it partly transparent to check that it's, well, both data sets agree on the location of that lake. So I, now I can draw directly from, for example, this one. I do it uh, very roughly in order not to spend too much time on it, but you can be way more precise and add way much nodes. But let's say this is the my crude approximation of that lake. I don't know how it's called. Very crude approximation. Here we are. And for that one, I'm going to add the tag uh, natural water. Okay. I do validate. I save. Now I go back to OffRexP and I'm going to start again from step one because this is the place where vector data is recorded. So I won't see the difference here because it's not the, 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 all the pieces of water are not listed, but I will notice it later when I will inspect the mesh. Should be done in a few seconds. Uh, okay, triangulate. And we will, sorry, close the background and we will launch a second copy of Medit with that new uh, version. Here we are. So that one I will put it on the left. The old one was here on the right. Uh, render shading E for triangle types. I zoom it and you see already that we have our missing lake here is now tagged as water. And so in particular, in later steps, explain will put uh, well, not explain, auth for XP will, so it already added some smoothing here in order so to have water which is plain. And uh, in the DSF, in the resulting uh, explain DSF file, it will be a, tagged as physically as water so that, for example, there will be reflections of the sun on it and you will be able to use a float plane, for example. Um, whereas in that case, although the alpha photo would show some water, you would uh, land on it like a ground, whereas it's, it's not true water. Okay, so these are two simple examples. You can elaborate on these. And uh, okay, see you next time.